Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday edition of the News Night. I'm Sanket Upadhyay. Uh, what you were seeing just now was the Congress party actually releasing the names of about 50 candidates for the Lok Sabha. But whatever may ha be happening politically in the national capital and also the mood in the country being political in nature, we are safely assuming tonight that perhaps those who are not vote banks in this country have no say in whatever this country actually decides. Two Indian men held captive by a firm in Tehran, Sanket Pandya and in fact Sanket Pandya from Gujarat and Mohammad Hussain Khan from Delhi. Both electrical engineers are illegally confined in Iran. For four months their families have been running from pillar to post. Their kids refuse to attend school. But in this political season, does anyone care? Are these men and their families nobody's concern? Will Salman Khurshid, will Narendra Modi, will Sonia Gandhi intervene and ensure their return home safe and sound? Our top focus, two Indians stranded in Tehran, one from Gujarat, another from, from Delhi. Their families have knocked at every door they could. The Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister's office, the Ministry of External Affairs, Sonia Gandhi. But from every doorstep for the last few months, they have only returned empty-handed till now. My colleague Ahmad Azim gets us this heart-wrenching story. Iran ki company ne humko yahan par rok liya aur hamare passport rakh liye When electrical engineers had arrived in Iran to set up a power plant little did they know that their lives would take this turn Illegally confined in a company guest house, their passports seized. The two have been locked up since December last year, following a business dispute with their Goa-based company. Our international identity thi, passport was stolen from us. The Iranian company and the Hindustani company have been placed in the families of both men have sought intervention of the PMO, the External Affairs Ministry, Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi, but have received no help. These hostages, unable to even contact the Indian Embassy in Iran, given permission to only speak to the family. Moreover, the Goa-based company that sent the two men to Iran have waved the white flag, claiming there is nothing they can do. We have tried a FIR the company, we have to take a lot of pictures. We don't have the two men understandably distraught, their children too suffering, their education stopped as their families struggle to make ends meet. But no movement, no action and definitely no remorse from the company that is responsible for their plight or even the government whose duty it is to care for their own. With camera person Dinesh Lal, this is Ahmad Azim for Headlines Today. What is it exactly that the government of India has been doing for the past many months? We are joined in, in the studio by Mohammad uh, Hassan Khan, the brother of uh, a person who has been held captive. Uh, we are also joined in by Shabnam Hussain, the wife of uh, uh, Mohammad uh, Hussain, who has been held captive in Tehran, and also the friend of uh, Mohammad Hussain, Mr. Tariq Beg, who joins us in the Delhi studio. But before we come across to you, let's quickly uh, listen in to what uh, Mohammad uh, Hussain actually has to say. He is uh, with us from Tehran on the phone line. Mohammad Hussain, you are listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
जी मोहम्मद अपनी व्यथा बताइए क्या आपको क्या परेशानी हो रही है किस तरीके से आपने ये संघर्ष किया क्या प्रॉब्लम्स हुई आप कहां कहां गए और कहां से आपको मदद नहीं मिली सर हम दो लोग यहां पर हैं दोनों इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियर हैं हमारे इंडियन कंपनी पावर इंजीनियरिंग में हम लोग काम करते हैं जो गोवा की कंपनी है इस कंपनी ने ईरानी कंपनी है एक वादर जान करके उसको जनरेटर बेचा था इंडिया से और हमको एज अ कमिश्निंग इंजीनियर इंडिया से यहाँ भेजा है जो साइट है वो जानजान सिटी में है और यहाँ पर हम लोग एज ए कमिश्निंग इंजीनियर आए और ये सारी जिम्मेदारी हमको वहाँ से भेजने की इंडियन कंपनी की और ईरानी कंपनी की थी और हमको वादल जान के रिक्वेस्ट लेटर पर ईरानी एम्बेसी ने वो लेटर अप्रूव करके हमको वीजा वहाँ से इशू किया हम यहाँ आ गए यहाँ इनके लिए काम कर रहे थे हमको यहाँ पर काम करते हुए आपस में दो कंपनी के बीच में डिस्प्यूट हो गया डिस्प्यूट होने की वजह से ईरानी कंपनी की जिम्मेदारी थी हमारी यहाँ ईरान के अंदर रहने की और यहाँ से वापस जाने की उसने वो सारी जो फैसिलिटीज थी कट कर दी और हमारे साथ में बहुत ज्यादा एक तरीके से हम लोगों को जो है हैरेस करना स्टार्ट कर दिया और उसके बाद हमको सडनली काफी टाइम के बाद एम्बेसी से हमने अप्रूव किया एम्बेसी वालों ने हमको बोला कि तेहरान आ जाइए हम अब तेहरान में आने के बाद कुछ मदद कर सकते हैं ये कितने महीने पहले की बात है आपको कोई मदद मिली सर हमको यहाँ इंडियन एम्बेसी से थोड़ी मदद मिल रही है लेकिन उससे कुछ हो नहीं पा रहा है हमको वापस आने के लिए सिर्फ वो लोग अपना चिट्ठीते हैं और वो चिट्ठी से ही खाली बातचीत हो रही है हमारे लिए यहाँ पर और उसके अलावा कुछ भी नहीं हो पा रहा है कोई कुछ नहीं कर पा रहा है मोहम्मद हसन हम आपकी इतनी मदद मदद जरूर करेंगे कि आपकी आवाज जो है जो अथॉरिटीज है दी अथॉरिटीज इफ दे आर लिसनिंग टू दिस और वॉचिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर Uh, broadcast that we are getting here on headlines today we are trying to connect mohammad hasan with his family here in new delhi we have uh, mohammad hasan aapki uh, wife aapke brother aur aapke dost yahan par studio mein hamare sath hain kya aap unhe koi sandesh dena chahte hain koi baat bolna chahte hain kyunki aaj ye sari baatein jo authorities hain yahan delhi mein aur sab jagah wo ye baat sunengi sir bas hum ye chahte hain ke humko yahan se hamare watan वापस आ लाने के लिए जो मदद हो सकती है जहाँ से वहाँ से हम लोगों को मदद कर दी जाए और हम चाहते हैं कि हमारी फैमिली के लिए जो भी कोई उनको हिम्मत देने के लिए सपोर्ट कर सकता है और उनकी जो मदद कर सकता है हमको यहाँ से लाने के लिए वो मदद की जाए ठीक है मोहम्मद हसन आप अगर हमारे साथ थोड़ी देर रुके आपकी आपकी वाइफ यहाँ पर है आप कुछ बोलना चाहेंगी शबनम जी अपने हस्बैंड को जो कि वहाँ तेहरान में है वो अभी आपको डायरेक्टली सुन सकते हैं और आप लोग जो बात करेंगे वो पूरा देश सुन रहा है अभी नहीं हम बस इतना कहना चाहेंगे कि वो बिल्कुल भी अपनी उम्मीद को ना छोड़ें अगर हमारी गवर्नमेंट हमारा साथ देती है तो वो इन शह जल्दी वापस आएंगे और वो अपनी फैमिली से मिल सकेंगे बस इतना ही कहना है आप हिम्मत रखना हमको भरोसा है कि हमारे लिए हमारी गवर्नमेंट कुछ ना कुछ करेगी देर से सही लेकिन जब भी कुछ करेगी तो हम लोग आ जाएंगे यहाँ से इंशाल्लाह आप लोग अपना ध्यान रखिएगा और अपने आप को संभाल के रखिएगा बस यही आप लोगों से हम चाहते हैं मैं अपने भाई को भी कहना चाहता हूँ कि मेरे भाई भी थोड़ा हिम्मत से काम ले और मेरे माँ बाप तो बहुत बुजुर्ग हैं उनका भी थोड़ा ख्याल रखें और उनको जो सपोर्ट चाहिए इस वक्त में वो सपोर्ट मेरे सारे घर वाले दोस्त सब लोगों से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि सब लोग मेरा साथ दें मेरे घर वालों का साथ दें ताकि उन लोगों को जो मेरी वजह से यहाँ तकलीफ हो रही है उसमें उन लोग थोड़ा सा उनको हिम्मत बना दें और मैं अपने इंडियन एम्बेसी वालों से भी ये कहना चाहूंगा कि हमको जो भी उनको जरूरत है जिस तरह की भी वो सपोर्ट वहाँ से इंडियन गवर्नमेंट उसको कर दे ताकि हम लोग यहाँ से वापस अपने घर आ सकें बहुत तकलीफ देता है क्योंकि लाइफ में इससे पहले कभी इतनी प्रॉब्लम फेस नहीं की थी कभी सोचा भी नहीं था कि ये सब कुछ जिंदगी में ऐसा भी कभी कोई मोड़ आएगा ये तो सिर्फ एक काम कर रहे थे कंपनी के अंदर कभी आज तक कुछ बेईमानी भी नहीं की कुछ ऐसा किया नहीं लेकिन फिर भी इतनी सारी प्रॉब्लम्स हो गई इनके यहाँ नहीं रहने की वजह से 
पेरेंट्स को हम लोगों को कितनी तकलीफों का सामना करना पड़ा बच्चे बीमार हो गए बच्चों के साथ प्रॉब्लम हो गई बच्चे कह रहे पापा नहीं आएंगे तो हम एग्जाम नहीं देंगे जिस दिन हम लोग प्रोटेस्ट के लिए गए थे उस दिन मेरे बच्चे को बहुत फीवर था तब भी उनको जाना पड़ा बच्चे बिल्कुल नहीं रह पा रहे हमारी अम्मी है उनकी तबीयत इतनी ख़राब हो गई वो दो बार हॉस्पिटलाइज हो गई हैं हमारी अम्मी अबू की एज भी काफ़ी है सेवेंटी फाइव के आसपास है वो भी बहुत परेशान है हमारे छोटा भाई है उसको भी कितनी बार उसकी तबीयत ख़राब हो गई वो तो सोच सोच के भाई की उसमें चक्कर खा के गिर जा रहे हैं बार बार ऐसा हो रहा है मैं खुद पिछले चार साल से डिप्रेशन की पेशेंट हूँ मेरा ट्रीटमेंट चल रहा है लेकिन अभी ये सब देख के कुछ समझ नहीं आ रहा है क्या हो रहा है दिल करता है पता नहीं वो उम्मीद जो है वो बिल्कुल ख़त्म होती नज़र आ रही है बहुत हर जगह भाग कर कोशिश कर ली हर जगह देख लिया लेटर भी भेज लिए हर जगह देख लिया लेकिन कहीं से कोई उम्मीद हर कोई एक बोलता है कि हम करेंगे हम करेंगे लेकिन कुछ रिजल्ट हाथ में नहीं आ रहे हैं कुछ भी दिख नहीं रहा महीने हो गए ये प्रयास करते चार महीने हो गए चार महीने हो गए मेरे भाई और मेरे पापा बहुत उनकी एज इतनी ज़्यादा है ये लोग बहुत धक्के खा खा के परेशान हो गए हर जगह सब कुछ छोड़ के सारे काम छोड़ के वो यहाँ से वहाँ भागते फिर रहे हैं उधर वो लोग इतने परेशान हैं पहले जैनजान में इतने परेशान रहे रानी कंपनियों ने ये कहा था कि उन सारा खर्चा वो उठाएगी सब कुछ करेगी लेकिन जहाँ उन लोगों ने जब पासपोर्ट छीन लिया तो उसके बाद उन्होंने वहाँ पे खाना खर्चा कुछ भी देना बंद कर दिया ये लोग वहाँ किस तरीके से भूखे प्यासे रहे पानी नहीं था पीने को वहाँ किस किस तरीके से ये लोग वहाँ पे रहे बिना पानी के मोहम्मद हुसैन आपके घर वाले जो यहाँ पर हैं, आपके भाई भी यहाँ पर हैं, आपकी पत्नी का ये कहना है कि बहुत परेशानी का सामना उन्हें यहाँ करना पड़ रहा है आप थोड़ी सी उम्मीद बढ़ाएंगे उनकी प्रयास हम लोगों की तरफ से भी है हेडलाइंस टुडे की तरफ से टीवी टुडे नेटवर्क की तरफ से कि ये आवाज हम सरकार तक पहुंचाए आप उम्मीद बढ़ाना चाहेंगे अपने परिवार की सर मैं यही कहना चाहूंगा हिम्मत देना चाहूंगा आपके कि भाई भी यहीं पर आप अपने भाई से बात करना चाहेंगे मोहम्मद असम खान डू वांट टू से समथिंग टू योर ब्रदर हु इज ऑब्वियसली वेरी अपसेट एंड लोनली राइट नाउ भाई हुसैन अस्सलाम वालेकुम अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम भाई हिम्मत रखिए हम लोग कोशिश में हैं और अब अब इन लोगों का थोड़ा साथ में लाए तो शायद के अब उम्मीद जगी है और अब जो भी सिस्टम नहीं सुन रहा है एटलीस्ट कम से कम हमारी आवाज़ उन तक पहुंचेगी ज़रूर और अब बस हम यही उम्मीद करेंगे कि जल्दी से जल्दी ये सारे काम जो हैं हो जाएंगे और जो भी फॉर्मेलिटीज़ हैं जो कानूनी कार्रवाइयाँ अब तक नहीं हुई हैं कम से कम उनके सरकार के कानों को ये आवाज़ पड़ेगी तो शायद के कुछ उम्मीद ज़्यादा जल्दी से अब सिस्टम काम करेगा और ये सब चीज़ें प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व होंगी इसलिए हिम्मत से रहो और कोई ऐसे ही हाँ बिल्कुल 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 आप लोग हिम्मत से काम लीजिए हम लोग कोशिश में हैं और इंशाल्लाह अब इन लोगों की हेल्प मिली है तो अब ये सारी चीज़ें जब लोगों के कानों तक पहुँचेंगे तो इंसानियत के नाते सब लोग हेल्प करेंगे ज़रूर हम लोगों में सब में इतनी इंसानियत बाकी है अभी इन ज़रूर मोहम्मद हुसैन आपके आपके दोस्त भी यहाँ पर हैं तारीख बैग वो भी आपसे कुछ कहना चाहते हैं तारीख आप अपनी हिम्मत बना रखना अपनी जो विल पावर है उसको बना रखना और कोशिश यहाँ से जारी है बस यहाँ की जो गवर्नमेंट है उससे हमारी रिक्वेस्ट है कि वो जल्द से जल्द इसमें अपना आगे से आगे कदम बढ़ाए और आपको यहाँ से वापस लेकर आए वहाँ से ईरान से हम लोगों की जो रिक्वेस्ट है वो यही है एक, एक जो हम लोगों की रिक्वेस्ट है सिर्फ ये है कि हम सरकार से सिर्फ इतना जानना चाहते हैं कि क्या एक हिंदुस्तानी होने के नाते हैं जैसे कि हम लोग अपना प्रॉपर कायदे कानून को सारे लॉ एंड ऑर्डर को फॉलो करते हैं इनकम टैक्स टाइम पे पे करते हैं हम लोग सैलरीड पर्सन है सारी चीज़ें कोई ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है तो हम लोग आखिर कितने दिन और ऐसे सिस्टम में एब्सिल्यूट रहेंगे कि हमको किसी तरह की कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन एटलीस्ट मतलब ये हद है कि एक एक महीने के बाद भी एक्नोलिजमेंट लेटर के अलावा कोई भी इन्फॉर्मेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशल्स के साथ के थ्रू हम लोगों को नहीं मिली है मेरे फादर भी बयालीस साल गवर्नमेंट की सेवा की है जमिल इस्लामी यूनिवर्सिटी में उन्होंने नौकरी की वो बेचारे जब जाते हैं सलमान साहब के पास तो सलमान साहब जवाब देते हैं कि क्या मैं बादशाह हूँ अरे भाई बादशाह नहीं तो आप और कौन हैं हमारे लिए तो आप ही बादशाह हैं सारी चीज़ को देख रहे हैं पूरे देश को आप चला रहे हैं लोगों के साथ ताल्लुक रख लें हमारी फ्रेंडली कंट्री है वो उसके साथ एक दो वर्ड करने में क्या है ऊपर से जो हमारे इंडियन अम्बेसर हैं वहाँ पर जो बैठे हैं वो बजाय उनको हेल्प करने के उनको इस तरह की बात करते हैं कि भाई दो ईरानी जेल में दो साल से इंडिया में बंदे आप उनको छुड़ाइए अपनी फैमिली को कहके तो हम आपकी कुछ एक्सचेंज की बात करेंगे कंपनी सपोर्ट नहीं कर रही है हम कंपनी को कैसे करें हम डिप्लोमेट नहीं बात कर सकते यहाँ इंडियन गवर्नमेंट के पास दुनिया भर के कानून है कायदे हैं उसने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जो किया उसके कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में क्या लिखा है एटलीस्ट ये लोग बात करें गवर्नमेंट से और गवर्न
कोई भी जवाब नहीं है हमारी कंप्लेंट्स का हमने एनएचआरसी से लेके और सारे मिनिस्टर्स से लेके पर्सनली जाके मिले हैं जब उन्होंने नहीं मिलने का टाइम दिया तो हम लोगों ने प्रोटेस्ट किया अपना टाइम खराब किया हम लोग नौकरी पेशा लोग हैं हम नौकरी करें अपनी जिंदगी को इस तरह से काटें तो एटलीस्ट कोई ऐसा प्रोविजन हो हमारे एक कोशिश करते हैं मोहम्मद हसन साहब हम अपनी तरफ से भी कि एक प्रयास किया जाए एक एफर्ट लिया जाए उसके बाद देखते हैं सरकार क्या इनिशिएटिव लेगी वी हैव अ पॉलिटिकल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव आल्सो एंड आई आल्सो बिलीव इफ वी हैव ऑन द फोन लाइन मिस्टर संकेत पांड्या ही इज ही इज अलोंग ही इज हेल्ड कैप्टिव इन तेहरान अलोंग विद मोहम्मद हुसैन पांड्या जी आपको मेरी आवाज सुनाई दे रही है हां जी हां जी पांड्या जी आप बरोड़ा बरोड़ा के रहने वाले हैं आपने जो जो रिपोर्ट्स हमने देखी आपने भी प्रयास किया अलग अलग लेवल पर पीएमओ से बात करने की एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री से बात करने की और क्योंकि आप गुजरात से हैं तो गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी के दफ्तर में भी आपने एक रिक्वेस्ट भेजी आपकी कहानी क्या है ये भी देश को पता लगे मेरी कहानी इनसे कुछ जुदा नहीं है क्योंकि हम साथ में जुड़े हैं और एक साथ देता है कहानी कुछ भी अलग नहीं है सिर्फ नाम अलग है बाकी मैं भी एक हिंदुस्तानी हूँ लेकिन आज तक मेरी कंपनी ना मेरे घर पे एक बार झांकने गई है कम्युनिटी के गांव में भी ना पूछने गई है सिर्फ बातें करती है और रुला रुला के कभी भी देती है तो रुला रुला के देती है उसका कोई मतलब नहीं है और सपोर्ट नहीं दे रही है जो देना चाहिए सब किसी से सब आश्वासन देते हैं सब फर्स्ट ऑफिस में मेरे बीवी जो घर की आबू है तुमको रोड पे भेजना पड़ा तब तक हमारी गवर्नमेंट डूब बैठी है क्या यही एक हिंदुस्तान की सभ्यता है कि बीवी के बाप के लिए बीवी मानना पड़ेगा फिर भी नहीं मिलेगी कुछ भी तो नहीं क्या कहता हूँ अपनी इज्जत भवानी नहीं है इससे अच्छा मर जाएंगे नहीं ऐसी नौबत भगवान ना करे ऐसी नौबत आए पांड्या जी वी हैव वी हैव रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द भारतीय जनता पार्टी आल्सो शाइना एनसी ऑल राइट वील ट्राई गोइंग अक्रॉस टू शाइना एनसी इन जस्ट अ शॉर्ट मोमेंट फ्रॉम नाउ शी वाज सपोज टू जॉइन अस बट पांड्या जी आपकी सरकार से उम्मीद क्या है बस अब एक सच्चे हिंदुस्तानी को अगर आप वापिस ला सकते हो तो उसको एक हिंदुस्तान प्रत्ये और अपनी गवर्नमेंट के प्रत्ये जो है वो बनाए रह, बने रहेगा वरना किसी को उम्मीद नहीं रहेगी एक आम इंसान को जो गवर्नमेंट बनाती है कोई कोई चीज नहीं बचती है सब क्योंकि तो एक अच्छे इंसान सच्चे इंसान को जिसने कुछ नहीं किया उसको अगर ये झेलना पड़ता है तो फिर उसका ईमान नहीं रहता है सब आई जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट अगर इंडियन एम्बेसी को और की जरूरत है तो दो क्योंकि तो ये लोग हाथ खड़े कर देते हैं सिर्फ चिट्ठी लिख सकते हैं कुछ कर नहीं सकते ऐसा ही बताते हैं ऑफिसर हमारे घर वाले बूढ़े बुजुर्ग आपने देखे है हसन साहब जो मेरे भाई के मेरे बाप की उम्र की है वो खुद कल के आना पड़ता है संकेत जी एज वेल एज मिस्टर मोहम्मद हुसैन प्लीज डू स्टे ऑन द फोन लाइन विद अस वाइल द फैमिली इज ऑल्सो हियर आई बिलीव वी हैव अ बिट ऑफ ब्रेकिंग न्यूज कमिंग इन एट दिस मोमेंट सलमान खुर्शीद दी एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर हैज टेकन अप दिस मैटर नाउ विद द इंडियन ऑफ द इंडियन इंजीनियर इन फैक्ट विद द फॉरन मिनिस्टर ऑफ ईरान This is the latest breaking news that we are getting at this moment. Post this particular report that headlines today has in fact filed. The External Affairs Minister has in fact spoken to Jawad Zarif, who is the External Affairs Minister of Iran after the family in India took the plea to the government. Though legal complications persist in this particular matter, let's quickly go across to Maha Siddiqui who now joins us with all the latest Maha. What is the position at this moment that the Indian government has taken? I believe a phone conversation has happened post this particular report that we have put out. The family of the engineer Muhammad Hussain has been in touch with senior Congress leader Ahmed Patel, and we understand that Ahmed Patel has been speaking with Salman Khurshid about the matter. After which, the External Affairs Minister took up the issue of these two engineers who are in informal detention in uh, Iran with the Iranian Foreign Minister Javed Zarif. Now, we also do know that these two engineers, after they managed to make their way to Tehran, were provided a guest house by. the embassy over there however at one level the ministry of external affairs does admit that because of the legal complications they have not been able to move too far ahead in this matter and that is the reason that these two engineers for perhaps no fault of theirs have been in this informal detention for about 4 months now tehran is not willing to let them come back 
from what we understand is that their lawyers uh, that mm. and three lawyers have been changed by the company mm. the indian company they have been in touch uh, with the family giving them updates but these two engineers are also now able to talk with the family and are able to give them a daily update however the case hasn't progressed much and that is why the families are extremely upset Welcome back to News Night. The Congress has announced its third list of candidates. The big takeaway from the announcement is what headlines today has been saying since morning. Tainted Suresh Kalmadi has not been given a ticket to contest the elections. Vishwadeet Kadam, in fact, will be the party's contender from the Pune seat. The other highlight from the announcement is that the Congress still hasn't decided on their candidate from the Varanasi seat. Meanwhile, the focus of the list was the capital, while Kapil Sibyl will be contesting from Chandni Chowk, so a direct face-off between Ashutosh from the Aam Party and Kapil Sibyl from the Chandni Chowk seat. Sandeep Dixit will be fielded from East Delhi, Ajay Makan from New Delhi District and Krishna Thirath from the North West Delhi constituency. NCT of Delhi Chandni Chowk, Sri Kapil Sibal. NCT of Delhi North East Delhi, Sri Jay Prakash Agarwal. East Delhi Sandeep Dixit. New Delhi Sri Ajay Makan. North West Delhi SC Srimati Krishna Tirat. All right, going back to one of the top focus uh, here on Newsnight. It's the season of dissent and disgruntled elements in the BJP and various other parties are now threatening to derail Narendra Modi's Delhi march. Protests are breaking out against a number of BJP debutants who are miffed over the party, para-dropping outsiders for keen tussles. Today, it was the turn of Kiran Kher and General VK Singh to face the rot of disgruntled ticket seekers. <laughs> BJP's internal strife boiling over. High-profile debutants facing fire from local workers. When actor Kiron Kher arrived in Chandigarh to begin campaigning, she and husband Anupam Kher faced angry BJP workers. The Kher couple was shown black flags by slogan shouting workers. Supporters of local strongmen are miffed over a so called outsider parachuting in their turf. Opposition is a good sign. It's, it's a healthy sign. I think there should be people who have been working hard. I'm sure that, uh, over a period of time uh, it will become all right. Former Army Chief General VK Singh, a recent entrant, faces similar anger. Singh was heckled by BJP workers who opposed his possible candidature from Ghaziabad adjoining Delhi. Facing friendly fire, the former army chief assumed a conciliatory tone. The BJP brass is grappling with discontent in Lucknow as well over possible ticket to Congress turncoat Jagdambika Pal. The BJP is yet to decide on the 26 seats that are left in Uttar Pradesh where the crucial uh, parliamentary board and CEC meeting is to take place uh, to decide on the distribution of tickets. But even before the tickets could be decided, there are sporadic protests taking place uh, in various districts in Uttar Pradesh. And here at the BJP office in Lucknow, there are two groups of protesters who have come here to protest the tickets being given in their constituencies. Disgruntled BJP workers have upped the ante of selection of candidates in other parts of UP and Haryana. Will this hit Narendra Modi's march to Delhi? With Manaman Singh China in Chandigarh and Amir Haq in Lucknow, Shujoy headlines today.
Well, in this election season, are political paratroopers the in thing? Reena Gupta, member of the Aam Aadmi Party, joining us to debate this particular point. China NC, a member of the Bharatiya Janata Party with us. CR Kesavan, spokesperson of the Congress Party, as well as Javed Ansari, a national affairs editor here in the Delhi studio. Let me ask my first question to you, China NC. What is wrong with the BJP? Why is it that every time a big decision is taken, you face so much resentment from not the opposition, but your own? Let me answer that very straightforwardly and tell you that in a democracy and especially in a situation where every political party has the right to determine who its candidatures, uh, candidates would be and purely for the reason of winnability as well as offering the electorate a good honest candidate. I think the BJP has done just that. You cited two examples, one of Kiran Kher, who is not an outsider in Chandigarh. She has a home there, she has family there and she is from the uh, from Chandigarh itself. No, no, so winnability is not a factor for the BJP? Javed, would you agree with that assessment of, the, of no, China? No, absolutely it is. Winnability is, is not their I criteria. Said, no, no, she I said says winnability is the criteria. I so said hard winnability work and, loyalty and is not. credible candidature. Go, going I by the manner in which they've gone about things, this shows that winnability at all costs one second. Is, is the priority. Javed ji. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Javed ji, at as a representative of the Bharatiya Janata Party, I think that one needs to understand that in a democracy there are bound to be aspiration of not just one from the cadre, maybe hundreds from the cadre. A lot of people feel they have worked very hard but clearly the party has to have a political strategy in place as to who would fit the slot to match all criteria and all criteria means winnability, a credible face, somebody who is determined with the party ideology and at the end of the day we need to take our tally to the best possible numbers. Let's, let's I'm bound that question. to uh, sympathize okay. with our cadre if they have a little bit of resentment in initially but fortunately the BJP has an ideology and has a thought process where we truly believe that pa well, a party this comes way ev ahead Everybody of is going to say this, no China. This is an argument that everybody is going to take that we have an ideology. You know we do not consider winnability as the most important factor we have to see, uh, you know, we have to keep various no, uh, forces at play. No, he said we do consider winnability. No, fine, agreed. But you also say that we I practice that democracy. Multiple, what sort of democracy points. is this that there are black flags How does shown? the parliamentary... One second. One second. If there is a parliamentary board and if there is an election committee and there is a unanimous opinion on a particular candidate, hmm. surely the candidate which is announced has made five others unhappy. This is a democratic process. But our party, I am trying to say that our cadre is so committed to the cause and so committed to ideology that they are bound to come into place in a day Why or is two. Mr. B.S. Yadurappa back? Vent to their anger and rightfully so. Again, it is the prerogative of the party, the party leadership, and especially. Are you not worried in about a perception problem? Where, where, one second, the perception versus reality battle, we can fight forever. On that same battle, Let we lost the, the state Congress of Karnataka and we did not compromise on any principle there. Okay. Right now, you have a high court which has given an opinion which I don't need to cite again. Okay. Mr. C.R. Kesavan of the Congress party, you heard uh, the BJP representative who feels that there is nothing wrong with the two voices of, you know, two places, Ghaziabad as well as Chandigarh, where you have had strong dissent from their party rank and file. Uh, first thing, I'd address this on a larger scale and come back to the BJP issue, Sanket. Mm -hmm. See, this is a phenomenon which does cut across all parties and there is no denying about that. But uh, one case in question is, see, you should also see certain people could be national figures, you know, national leaders who could probably go to different places. But what we're saying here with the BJP is very uh, interesting because uh, even there, if there is a BJP wave in Uttar Pradesh, I don't know why uh, Narendra Modi ji doesn't contest from Muzaffar Nagar. More importantly, why should uh, Rajnath Singh ji, who is uh, sitting MP from Ghaziabad, scurry away to another place? You know, I, I think there is a sense of panic and you know, uh, it happened with AAP too. You saw what happened in Delhi when they announced the siege. There was massive protests in South Delhi. But if, I mean, today you could point out the case Mr. Azharuddin being given from Rajasthan. See, mm. I could counter argue and say Rajasthan, we didn't perform well, but the Congress is confident that even though the assembly elections didn't go well, we'll do well. No, no, but the point here, Mr. Kesavan, and I think Javed will agree no, no. with me. Javed, don't you think that all the hard work that the people on the ground actually do. I'm coming let's, back. Let's Sanket, take this particular list of the Congress party. I mean, all the hard work no, that I may have been done by people in no, Savai no, no, Madhupur. No. 
Now you have Azhar Din over there. Para dropped by the Congress Party. That's precisely no, no, the point. That's precisely thing. the point I was trying to make when uh, Shaina Ji was speaking. Mm. She says that winability is the criteria, and uh, my friend is right. This is something which cuts across party lines. Absolutely. But what does it say for loyalty? What does it say for dedication? Nothing. What does it say to those workers who, in their who in the times were were rough, they sweated it out for you, they braved it out. Now when now when the going is good, now when the, when when the time comes for them to be rewarded, you have somebody else coming in. Whether it is a Kiran Kher, whether they, uh, whether it's General Vikas Singh or whoever, this cuts across party line. And this heartburn you'll see everywhere and in in lot of parties. Well, Mr. Kesavan, wouldn't be you, you know wouldn't it I be correct to assume that this is an epidemic with all political parties? No, no, no. I you know the do do dhakkaas for the karikarta. But winability, you Sanket, would need uh, a face. Javiji made a pertinent point. No, no, that is why we have to look at what Sri Rahul Gandhi has done with the primaries in 15 uh, constituencies. See, what we have now is a top-down approach. The primaries which the Congress has initiated will be a bottom-up approach. If you see, the electors of a primary in a Lok Sabha constituency for the candidate are people who belong to that district. See, you know, even in the recently held 15 primaries, there well, were many primaries people who were candidates who were rejected. Were primaries no, held for Raj Babar? I'm talking about a process here. No, no. Were no, primaries held for Nandan Nilikani? No, no, no. So I am Mohammed telling Azhar you, Azhar Nandan Nilikani is a local person. Nandan, Nandan Nilikani is a local. But let me come here. I did say it cuts across party lines. What I am saying is, the primary no, initiative... The primary is argument. You know, this is a selective cosmetic exercise stop. that you have carried out. You can't pass it off as something which is, you know, new and a system that exists now in the Congress I, party. I, I, I have cited four examples. Claim. From Kulpur, we have had protests against Mohammed Kaif. Isn't it, Javed? You know, the question is, it's all right that you're doing primaries in 15 constituencies, but that doesn't mean that in the rest 500 plus constituencies, you'll run amok. You know, what happens? I come back to that question, and it's not just for you, it's for most political party. What happens to that honest, diligent worker who's been breaking his back, sweating it out in the sun when the times were bad? Now, when the time comes to be rewarded, there are others who come and walk away with the cream. Absolutely. What is an explanation that in you fact, give? In fact, in fact, Mr. Kesavan and, and uh, Ms. Gupta, before I come across to you, we have the Newsnight newsmaker with us, Kiran Kher. Uh, good evening, ma'am. You have faced a lot of, uh, you know, flack as far as uh, your BJP supporters are concerned in Chandigarh. Perhaps they are not happy with the fact that you are there. What do you think is the first battle you will actually have to fight in Chandigarh? Deal with the opposition or deal with your own? I think it will be simultaneous. There will be, there will be bound to be some resentment within because people were expecting their people whom they worked with every day to get tickets. But if the party has not done that, after the initial resentment, I'm sure people will come round because I don't blame them for that. At the same time, I'm sure they won't take it beyond a certain limit. So I think that will be, that will go on simultaneously. I have so little time left. It's just 20 days, 25 days. But are you aware, Ms. Kher, that uh, black flags were shown by BJP supporters? No, because I was not brought from the route from where the black flags were being shown. So I didn't see it. In fact, I was telling them, I want to see the black flags because I think it was very dramatic. I mean, what leader is that when he comes and he doesn't show his hair, he doesn't show his hair, he doesn't show his hair, he doesn't show his hair. I never thought that this will be my position, that people will show my hair. This is a very big thing, you have made me a very big leader. I missed that. But people who saw it, they saw that there were some people at different corners had been positioned. You know, it could be also that there were some people at different corners had been positioned. You know, it could be also Congress people. Some of them must have been. Oh, conspiracy theory. Because all of them can't be BJP people. Whenever they know some people are doing this, other people jump on the bandwagon. And it's very incestuous in, uh, in a place like Chandigarh or a small place. People keep crossing over. People know each other, whether they are in the in Congress or the BJP. So I think to sift it out and see what is the real thing, we'll take one or two days and then we'll get on with okay, the job. Okay, okay, Javed, what, what is your assessment about what Ms. Kher is saying? You know, She's, I, she, you know, she it's, good to, it's good to see that in uh. the heat of this political battle, she still can see the humorous side of things. <laughs> but I'm sure uh. there's, there's a lot more to it than just... Uh, Humor and and she'd be well advised to take this seriously let's, because let's, there is this resentment. Let's in. let's actually ask her one more question, Miss Kher. Do you feel that fighting this outsider tag will actually weaken your fight against Pawan Kumar Bansal? I mean, you have a peculiar situation where there is a fight uh, between you and you know a fellow person from Tilson Town, uh, Gulpanag, 
and a political heavyweight who has been a minister and who has represented Chandigarh for a very long time, Pawan Bansal. Do you think it weakens your fight? Weakens your fight against Pawan Bansal? No, not at all. I'd rather be an honest outsider than a dishonest insider. And I don't think there's anything wrong in being called an outsider by him because I don't believe I'm an outsider. I belong to Chandigarh. I've studied here. I have played for India from here. I am a Chandigarh girl. I have home here. My parents, my sister, and I come here all the time. I mean, एक लड़की अगर विदा होकर अपने ससुराल चली जाती है, तो मायके वाले उसे भूलकर उसे outsider नहीं कहते। तो बहुत घटिया बात कही है उन्होंने ये। Okay, Ms. Kher, please do stay on with us. Well, Javed, this is classic Kiran Kher. You know, uh, she's finding humor, as you very rightly mentioned. But let's and let's she's feisty. And and she's feisty. absolutely, it'll be a keen contest in Chandigarh. But uh, let's let me go across to the Aam Aadmi Party representative, Ms. Reena Gupta. You have heard the political debate so far, the political discourse. Now, your political party has been, you know, recently infamous for doing what we are discussing right now. And the latest example is from Chandigarh, Gulpanar. How do you respond to these allegations? So, uh, Sanke Sanket, uh, I hope you'll give me enough time as I've been listening very patiently <coughs> to all the panelists. Enough. First of all, for us, the paramount thing is the candidate's integrity. So, winnability and everything else becomes very secondary. And I, I wish, uh, you know, uh, my colleagues from the, some of the other parties could claim the same thing. Uh, and we, we go through extensive screening process to make sure that you know, there is no criminal background against our candidate, there are no corruption charges, there are no charges of any kind. You know, we've gone through uh, extensive lengths throughout the country, we've contacted social movements, we've, been, we've contacted people who've been working on social causes, and that's how we've selected our candidates. Because, you know, come to think of it, in absence of a cadre system, I think this is the only, only other way to identify it people of eminence who've been working in their field without looking for any kind of recognition. And so we've really gone through this process and we are very, very proud of the fact that we've managed to find candidates who don't have any criminal background against them. If you look at the recent report of the Association for, Association for Democratic Reforms, 30% of the candidates of BJP and Congress and of the other parties have criminal cases against them. And, and I'm so glad that, you know, now Congress is talking about primaries. But I think, you know, I, and I'm, I'm so proud of the fact that Aam Aadmi Party has changed the political discourse in this country. You know, it's only now that Congress is talking about primaries. And it's only now that Congress has had the courage not to give tickets to people like uh, Mr. You know, Mr. Kalamadi. Or, I mean, they did give it to Mr. Bansal. But some of the other tainted ministers have been kept out of the parliament only because of this, only because we brought out this now, issue. Ms. Gupta. We've made this center stage in the country. Now, Ms. Gupta, and, since... and to answer your question about Gul Panang, Gul has been a, a member of India Against Corruption. She's from Chandigarh, so I don't think she's an outsider. She's very much an insider. She is from Chandigarh. Okay, what about and, Ashish Khaitan? You, know, you have to also realize that we I mean, have he has been a fellow journalist. Ms. Gupta, he has been a fellow journalist. Uh, Ticket back, we've, we've given it to Gul Panang. What about, you know, a very senior person from our uh, profession who has actually gone to the Aam Aadmi Party, Mr. Ashutosh? He is not from uh, Chandni Chowk? Yes. No, but you know, he, he's an eminent person and he's done some really oh, that's great the whole journalism. Point. So, so you agree that you believe in or you subscribe in paratrooping? No, we, we did not paratroop. Our process was very transparent. We invited applications and a lot of people applied and out of those people, the screening committee chose uh, Ashutosh. Can I say something? Yes, yes, China. I think every political party is entitled to his or her own strategy and I think that in a country which is as diverse as India to label people as insiders or outsiders is absolutely unfair. If the person who is the candidate is commitment to, committed to the constituency and the party he or she is fighting from, there are bound to be certain people within the Carter who are happy with the decision, certain who are not. But eventually, as they say, majority rules. And if majority rules, there is going to be a legitimate voice of dissent. I clearly believe in disciplined parties that legitimate voice well, of dissent slows down and eventually we accept the party decision Mr. irrespective Kesavan. of our personal opinions. Mr. Kesavan, why do I see a situation, and Javed, it, it's quite peculiar, why do I see a situation where the Aam Aadmi Party, the BJP and the Congress are okay with this particular point? You know, it, it's fine to paratroop, 
as long as winnability is the factor, credentials should be clear. It you know, seems there is scant respect for the worker, the real Aam Aadmi in political parties. You know, it's not surprising and if I can use the word and I use it with certain reservations, mm. they, all of them are equally guilty of this, mm. of, of giving preference to people who come from arts outside rather than to those who worked with them, who have been with them in their, in their bad times, in their difficult times. All of them ultimately when it comes down to it, Winability is the criteria. Everything else comes second. Mr. Ba uh, Mr. Kesavan, would you like to have the last word? Do you think no, that I they do. prioritize think, uh, winability I, and a no, person who comes from outside, the I outsider, she, has no, no, no see, I think she, she, Rahul Gandhi has been reiterating this. I think fairness, maybe not you know, that, to that extent which we like it to be, but I think the primary is a start. But coming back to what Kiran Kerji said, she said the Congress party was responsible for the you know, protest there at a constituency. Today Mr. Uh, Arun Jaitley went to Amritsar and Mr. Siddhu didn't turn up. You want to blame the Congress party for that too? Kindly don't hide behind that. You know, there is a problem the BJP is having. They should concede to that. As regards to this debate, I think going forward, the primaries will change and ensure that the deserving people who work hard are given the right opportunity and you know, uh, they deserve... So they you agree it's a problem? So you agree it's a problem and that no, is why for winnability, uh, when you, para dropping no, no, is fine. it's not a problem. It's a, it's, it's a, I, I think it's a phenomenon which is prevalent everywhere and by going and nitpicking into you know individual cases it's not going to help. I think change has to come at so a larger at level. Least, and I, at I least think we have tough, acceptability. Definitely. At least we have acceptability. Mr. Kesavan, Shaina NC, Ms. Reena Gupta as well as Javed Ansari, thank you very much for participating in this particular debate. And before we wrap up, just one quick last word to Kiran Kher, the newsmaker. Ms. Kher, what is your assessment of Mr. Pawan Kumar Bansal? Do you feel the taint charges will cause him harm? or in fighting in Aam Aadmi Party and the Bharti Janata Party will make sure that he wins again? Make sure that he wins again. I hope not because many times he's a master at crafting this, you know. Ladai laga do aur ye log aapas mein busy ho jayen. Humare jo log hai emotional hai, they are little innocent in that sense. Immediately react kar jate hai. Lekin samaj dar ab humme hona padega because we shouldn't play into his hands. And aap, I don't know about aap very much. See uh, how it is fixed in in Chandigarh yet. I think there were some. They were asking Miss Bhatti to stand earlier, but she refused. She withdrew, and then they feel the same way about Gul that she's a. The people were saying that she's also come from Bombay. So I don't know how much that applies. I'll get to know in the next one or two days. You guys have grabbed me on the first day I've landed here. <laughs> Well, we'll let you go, Ms. Kher. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, debate. Uh, Kiran Kher, the Newsnight newsmaker, speaking to headlines today. That's all the time we have in this edition.